Hey, what's going on guys and welcome to the video. Hope you're having a great day. Now the vehicle sitting behind me today is a 2010 Ford Fusion and although the exterior isn't quite as bad as the last few I've done, the inside more than makes up for it. Okay, so taking a look around this Fusion and with this vehicle having been used on the farm, the dirt in the wheel wells and the really dirty wheels and tires isn't a surprise, although all the bug guts up on the front end definitely was, but moving inside now and honestly it's pretty gross as besides all the dog hair, the carpets are absolutely stuffed full of dirt in some spots, there's all kinds of stains in the seats, and then the center console area is really grimy too. But just before we dive into this farm car, take a second and make sure you're subscribed to the channel so you never miss out on a future video and consider becoming a channel member as well for exclusive behind the scenes and sneak peeks of new videos. All right, well, I'm definitely looking forward to getting started on that interior and seeing just how good I can get it looking. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the transformation. Okay, so starting on the pre-wash rinse, and despite pressure washing being one of my favorite parts of detailing, I have to say it's a nice change of pace to be working on a relatively clean exterior today, so that's definitely going to allow me to get through this detail a little bit quicker today. And I figured I'd let you know that I was able to record the customer's reaction when he picked up the vehicle, so you guys will definitely have to stick around until the end of the video to catch that, as it's a good one. Now to give you a little bit of background on this vehicle, it's currently got about 290,000 kilometers or about 180,000 miles and has been used on the farm for quite a few years which explains why there's dirt and grease stains in the seats and why some of the trim is so dirty, likely from dirty and greasy hands touching it. So with the owner planning to repurpose the car as more of a commuter vehicle now, he brought it to me to get it thoroughly cleaned and ready for a new life. Starting on these super dirty door jams now and by making sure to spray at a steep angle and control the wand, I can easily get these clean in a matter of seconds without a drop going inside the car. 
but for the trunk jam where all the leaves are, it definitely takes some careful spraying to avoid getting water in the trunk. And this is definitely one of those work smart, not hard moments as doing this any other way would take significantly longer. Now as I spray off the wheels and tires here, I figured I would answer a question I've seen a few times recently, and that's what is tire blooming? Now that's something I have mentioned before in my videos, and basically blooming happens when the anti ozonant in the tires leaches out, oxidizes with the air and turns brown. Although this is a natural thing that happens to tires over time, it does need to be removed to prolong the life of the tires, and then once removed you should always protect the tires with a good water based dressing instead of silicone based ones. So getting some wheel and tire cleaner sprayed on these dirty wheels, I'll then grab my Detail Geek Contour Tire Brush to agitate, and we'll also use my soft wheel brush for the rim face as well. And if you've been wondering where you can get either of these brushes, well, they're available on my website at detailgeekautocare.com, where worldwide shipping is available. Now since I noticed quite a bit of iron contamination on this paint while I washed it, I'm going ahead and using my iron decon spray which will safely dissolve those little iron particles, turning purple when it does and then I'll simply just spray it off after letting it sit for a few minutes. But looking around the car and there was definitely iron contamination on every single panel and wheel and if anyone is curious, yes you can use regular detailing clay to achieve the same results here. The only issue is that it's going to take you a lot longer to remove those particles by hand. So if any of you out there have ever noticed tiny little rust spots on your paint, well that's iron contamination and it can be easily dissolved and rinsed away with a product like this. Starting on drying and for those of you who have been waiting to get your hands on one of these Detail Geek Ultra Plush drying towels, well you won't have to wait much longer as they should be restocked in just a couple weeks.
All right, starting on the interior now, and I'll first get all the garbage and random personal items removed from the trunk. And I'm always anticipating finding something interesting in here. So besides the little Caesars bag, I found a Pokemon game for Game Boy, so that definitely brought some good childhood memories back. Okay, with the front seats out, we can take a look at what's hiding underneath, and as usual, it's just more hair, garbage, and grossness. And then I'll also get the entire center console and back seat removed to make cleaning everything easier. Working my way around with the vacuum and you might already be able to tell but the carpet in this fusion is pretty decent quality which is making vacuuming really easy and all the dog hair is easily getting sucked out so no need for the lily brush today which I'm honestly not complaining about as it allows me to move through here a little quicker. Now under the back seat where there was a ton of debris and little pieces of garbage, I'm going to use my boar's hair detail brush to quickly get it all loosened up and sucked away by the vacuum.
Moving to the driver's seat now, where it's a little dirtier than the passenger seat, and with these stains likely being grease and oil, I'm guessing it might take a little bit of effort to get them completely removed, and as I make the first few passes, it's clear my suspicion was correct, so once I've gone over it a couple of times, I'll repeat the entire process, not stopping until the seat is absolutely perfect. Moving inside to the carpets now and you'll notice I've switched over to my Detail Geek medium green drill brush and that's because there's a couple sections in here that I can tell are going to need the extra agitating ability these provide. So if any of you guys enjoy detailing your own vehicles, these medium green ones are perfect for tougher stains or floor mats and the soft white ones are great for the less soiled ones. I've got them available on my website at detailgeekautocare.com so feel free to give them a look.
Moving to the passenger side, and a question that I see pretty often is does the Bissell get the seats and carpet completely dry? And while the answer is no, which is exactly why I always start with the seats when I'm extracting so they have more time to dry out, but honestly it doesn't matter what kind of extractor you use, none of them can ever get seats or carpet completely dry, it's always going to be slightly damp when you're done, so by starting with the seats I can ensure they have enough time to dry before the owner picks the vehicle up so they don't end up with wet pants on the way home. Here's the bucket and a half of dirty, greasy, and nasty water pulled from the fusion. Gross. Starting on all the dirty trim and upholstered door inserts now, and I'm opting for the steamer here as with a towel wrapped around the triangle brush attachment, it can quickly get things clean and then I'll just switch over to the brush attachment for the rest of the door and I'll wipe things down with a dry microfiber towel when I'm done. Now for this really greasy section here, I'm using the steamer again to hopefully agitate all that grease and grime off, and because of the texture of the material, it wasn't coming off very easily, so I'll then spray on a little bit of APC diluted 10 to 1, which made all the difference.
Now for this really grimy center console, the steamer is again the best tool for the job, but one thing I don't mention often is the proper technique to use when steaming, and that's that you always need to move quickly when you steam as the heat can very easily permanently turn plastic trim pieces white. So I always keep the steamer moving and never try to linger in one spot for too long. Time now to dress and UV protect the interior plastics and for that I'm using 303's Aerospace Protectant which is going to leave everything with a nice matte finish when it dries and as you'll see this gets applied to every bit of trim inside a vehicle, even in the glove box and vents underneath the seats which might seem like overkill to some of you but being a perfectionist it's just not in my nature to do a less than perfect job. Second last step here before this detail is done is to get all the glass cleaned inside and out and with some glass cleaner sprayed on my new Detail Geek waffle weave towel, I'll get to work and because I know there's a lot of you out there who struggle with streaks on the inside of the windshield, I figured I'd show you my process here and honestly it's not any different than it is anywhere else. I just go over it once and then flip the towel for the final wipe, but the secret here is using a waffle weave towel, so if streak free glass sounds good to you and consider picking up a set when they're available on my website.
pleasantly surprised. <laughs> I can imagine Steve's being disgusting. <laughs> Brand new. <laughs> yeah, literally. Yeah, you got something else. Yeah. That's awesome. The back seats are even worse. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> Found some pretty gross things underneath that back seat, too. Yeah, that. Lots of french fries in there. <laughs> yeah. That looks awesome. Yeah. Even all the dead bugs hanging out. Oh, yeah, they I saw that. I saw the, the wash or whatever there. <laughs> that looks awesome. Yeah. <laughs> it looks awesome. It's yeah, good. Okay, well, I appreciate that. I'm really Thanks. Uh, enjoy it. Absolutely. All right. We'll play and keep this clean. Glad to bring it back. <laughs> All right. See ya. See ya. All right, guys. Well, I have to say I'm pretty happy with how the Fusion turned out. It really is looking incredible after 11 hours of work. Now, if you guys enjoyed this video, make sure you smash the thumbs up button. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't yet. Consider becoming a member for exclusive sneak peeks and behind the scenes. Enjoy the guitar outro, and I'll see you guys in the next one.